What is up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? It's your boy, Soul Train Productions here, coming into the brand new video. <clears throat> and as you can see by the title of this video, we're going to be doing a late birthday haul. So, my birthday is on July 9th, if you don't know. And I recently turned 19, and I really didn't expect to get anything, but as you can see, I got a lot. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm just going to go over what I got, uh, not just figure stuff. I'm going to go over, you know, just basically let you know what I'm going to be doing within the next few weeks. So I say we hop right into it. Now, before I uh, actually before I do that, uh, before I even start, all I got to say is I already filmed the review for this guy. I'm doing a stop motion with him, though, uh, as the intro for the review. So I got to work on that. But I um, I can give you a little bit of a rundown uh, without like you know, fully reviewing the figure, because obviously, you know, I want you to go watch that other video, but, um, the only thing that's bad about this hit is, well, it's not going to do it now, but the skirt pieces fall off really, really easily, and it's annoying as hell. That's pretty much it, though. Other than that, this figure is completely solid. I still don't believe it's, uh, you know, <clears throat> shouldn't be $130, but, you know, <clears throat> premium bandai ha 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 um i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm try to hold my tongue i'm gonna I'm try to keep this video lighthearted, but just know that um i fucking hate premium bandai I'm, I'm not even gonna hold you i'm not i've been really trying not to swear in my videos but man do i hate premium bandai because i all right pre prepare for me to go on like a 45 second rant but Essentially, I don't understand how Hit is more of a premium Bandai figure over like someone like Full Power Jiren or Jiren. Because I got both of those for for like collectively together like a hundred and ten bucks. That means the original Jiren I got it for sixty five dollars plus five dollars shipping, and then the Full Power Jiren I got for forty five. But I have to pay a hundred and thirty for this. That's that's that, that's ridiculous. That is, that is completely ludicrous, and it wouldn't be that price if Premium Bandai wasn't a thing. So, that's my little rant on Premium Bandai. I think it makes it harder for average collectors to literally get anything, and I guarantee you that the majority of the people that do buy this figure have the dough to be able to do it, you know? So I'm not bashing on them. That, that That's not the issue. The issue that I have is for, like, collectors like me, like, I, I, I wouldn't even consider myself a collector, to be honest with you. I'm more of an animator. But... For average people like me, you know, like, I only got this figure because I got, you know, birthday money to be able to get it. If I didn't get that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have this figure. So, I just think that <clears throat> it's a cool character, and it's a character that everybody likes. Dude literally was, like, it, it'd be different if he was, like, a one-off character or something like that. But, like, like and, and, like, I was talking to Star Blast about this. He was, like, I, I can see, you know, like... From their perspective, like, he's only been in a few episodes and blah, 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 blah. But, yeah. Um, Premium Bandai sucks. That's basically the uh, synopsis of this. I am still going to keep the box and, and the brown box because I still have the box in here. Um, just because I, I I just think, well, honestly, if you want me to be real with you, this is the first time I've ever gotten a figure arts in the brown box and not just in the normal box. So, yeah. So that's the hit. I'm going to side him over to the side. And I got some Marvel and DC figures. So I got the DC UC uh, John Stewart. I can take him out of the bag and show you. This is my favorite Green Lantern because I grew up with um, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited because of my uncle. He, um, he was really the reason why I got into superheroes and stuff. You know, other than like my older brother. But, you know, come on, that, that one's kind of a given. If you have an older brother that likes superheroes and stuff for you know, like a dad or whatever, or an uncle, or, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's good, you know what I mean? I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to, like, this isn't, like, a figure review thing, this is more just me kind of rambling and just, you know, just showing y'all what I got, but, um, yeah, DC, you see, uh, John Stewart, comes with two accessories, uh, it's, like, a green fist thing, and then, like, a machine gun that you can, like, hook onto his arms and stuff, it's pretty cool, um, you're going to notice a trend here in about a, a little bit. 
uh, with the Marvel and DC figures. If you pay attention, then you'll understand. Okay. So then we have the Toy Biz uh, Nova. Take him out of the bag and show you. <clears throat> um, the only thing that's... Like, this is a lot more classic, like, of a look. Like, obviously, you know, these figures were made in, like, 2006, 2007-ish. So, you know, the fact that they're holding up in 2021 is nothing short of a miracle, if you want me to be honest with you. Um, but I, I like the more classic look than the modern look, if you want me to be honest with you. And that's probably just because, you know, I'm a nerd, you know, just like everybody else, but come on. But, um... I also think Toy Biz, I, I just, I like Toy Biz's articulation more than I do Hasbro's. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I know somebody in the comments will disagree with me. So, I'm ready to, I'm ready to make that case. <laughs> um, just put him back in the figure, or figure, figure, put him back into the figure, put him back into the bag. Alright, so then these two. I got these two guys for 20 bucks, like, for both of them. I got the Toy Biz Sentry, you know, just the normal one. And you can tell that uh, the the figures that I bought these, uh, you know, from, they, like, it was from collectors. I made sure that they were from from collectors so there wasn't, like, you know, like, dust or, like, grime or, you know, whatever builds up on figures when you just have them sitting on the shelf, you know, dust and stuff. Um, if I can actually angle the light... You see how yellow that is? If you were, if you guys could actually like, this is gonna sound weird, but you know that like fresh, fresh figure smell when you get it out of the box? It's like that fresh plastic. It still has this. Keep in mind, these figures are like 15, I think about, about 15 years old, at least for the Toy Biz ones. But, oh wait, hold on, I didn't show you the bearded version. The bearded variant is my is honestly my favorite one because when I was a kid there was this uh, stop motion I can't remember who it was by I'll probably remember later on when I'm editing and probably put it in the description but it was like black suit Superman and he was fighting Sentry and like the black suit Superman was a clone or something like that and <clears throat> that guy's animation you know it's about 11 12 years old now but. It's, uh, it's one of the things that inspired me to be able to animate and collect myself. So, you know, I had to get that bearded century figure, you know what I'm saying? And again, if you've already caught on to the trend now, then you, you are a very, very smart cookie. If you haven't, I'll explain it later. <clears throat> anyway, let me speed through this. This is Silver Surfer. Now, the only thing with this Silver Surfer figure that I don't really like, um, <clears throat> and I don't remember it doing this when I was a kid, because uh, I used to have one of these as a kid. But, like, you see that? It's, like, both these ball pegs are, like, connected. Now, I don't know if it's because the coll the collector I got it from, like, fixed it, you know, or whatever. Or, like, had to glue it or something. But that's the only thing I don't really like about this one. So, with this one, if I do animate with it, it'll probably be in little bits and pieces, right? Because, you know, his articulation's kind of, eh, wonky. <clears throat> so, let's hop into this guy. Um, I got this for free from, I think, GFS Stop Motion uh, about, I want to say a week ago. I, um, and I can get him out and show you. Um, I was on Star Blast Studios, uh, live stream. And on the live stream, I was pretty much saying like, oh, you know, like, I didn't get the chance to get the Bardock, but, you know, I'll just, I'll just wait till like around Christmas time when, you know, figure arts start going on sale that have been out for a year. And then this dude, uh, GFS Stop Motion, he, uh, it was in the comments and he was pretty much just like, yo, I'll give you the Bardock, you know, for free. And I was like, huh? Right? He's like, yeah, man, I don't really want it. And it, it, it's, it wasn't because there's anything wrong with this figure, to be honest with you. There's, there's, there's not. Like, articulation's pretty standard. The only thing that, um, like, the reason why it's still in the box, um, is the, I've, I've seen the arms, like, right here, uh, the arm swivel thing. I've seen uh, other people break that, and I'm very hesitant. So until I figure out exactly what I want to do with this guy, he's staying in the box. Um, I don't normally do that. I uh, I normally just, like, you know, get him out of the box, bang, bada, boom, right? But um, <clears throat> because I don't know what I want to do with this figure, and because I 
at the moment don't really have a I don't want to say use it was more like a want thing plus you know an extra figure to have hold on <clears throat> um I'm gonna keep them in the box to keep them in you know pristine condition and again I don't normally do that so I'm, I'm, I'm taking a page from like yummies star blast D, D, all that you know putting my figures in bags and stuff make sure they don't rub up against each other you know <clears throat> because i need to take better care of these things you know but <clears throat> um hold on sorry putting this uh putting this box back together is a bitch hold on okay there we go all right so let's get into arguably um one of my favorite figures at the moment um, if you see the box over there, I just got my Kong Studios Battle Damage Vegeta. Now, it's the same thing with my Bardock, though. Um, I was on the phone with Star Blast Studios earlier, and, um, you know, I hopped off the phone with them because, uh, you know, I was just geeking out that I got this, right? This part right here, like, the, um, the upper, like, like, around right here on, like, the figure, it swivels from side to side, and, you know, like, I don't really know, like... I know when it first released, there was, like, an extra pair of legs, an extra pair of arms, so I don't know if that, like, design feature was carried over into this figure, because this is the bloody baddie, <laughs> blood, bloody baddie, bloody battle damage version, <clears throat> but, um, this is also a figure that I'm very hesitant, because, like, I, I, I don't think it's, like, gonna pop out or anything, it's just, it, it's not loose, it's just, like, it makes me iffy and very weary to, like, you know, like, pose them and stuff, because, like, I feel it moving side to side, so I don't want to, like, move it one day and have it completely break and then have to ask 5k, you know, to replace it, but if that's the case, you know, I'm pretty sure 5k wouldn't have any issues. Also, shout out to 5k. Um, <clears throat> I ordered these, well, I ordered this one on the 14th, and then, um, on my actual birthday, I had, I had ordered the Clone Goku, and, while they did take almost like about two weeks, that's not 100% 5K's fault because they were moving from NYC to Cali, you know, so I understand, you know, new office, new setup, got to get all your stuff there, you know what I mean? All that, you know, and I I'm not mad that I had to wait because what I got was pretty fire. I mean, I think... uh think this is probably one of my favorite figures it's not my most favorite figure that i got this year uh that that'll probably go to hit to be honest with you <clears throat> i'll defend that 100 percent uh because I, I remember when they first showed off it and all the dragon bros were like nah man i'm gonna skip that i'm gonna skip that and i was like dog what are you talking about bro that's hit like come on right but um <clears throat> definitely you will definitely see this guy very soon that's all i will say um Okay, so let me move this black box, and let's get to the last four figures. Alright, so I bought a DCUC Lex Luthor. There's not really a lot of articulation to him. It's more for story stuff. Um, Thunder and, Se Thunder and Seijin Kami, almost said Seijin Kami's real name, Jesus Christ, oh my god. Ugh. I really, I really need to work on that, bro. Anyway, Thunder uh, Cat Studios and Seiji and Kami um, both know what this is going to be used for. So they'll probably comment something like, Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Or something like that. But um, he plays a major factor in one of the projects that I'm currently working on. So you'll learn more about that when, you know, I decide to make a trailer and stop being lazy. <laughs> Instead of doing like a little teaser of just, you know, a character trying to power up while all of his boys are passed the fuck out all, like, around a certain monster. So if you understand what I just described, then, you know, you get the, you get the Easter egg. Um, <clears throat> the Toy Biz Red variant of Iron Fist. And <clears throat> back when I used to do uh, Dragon Ball Reborn, I had this idea, because I kind of realized that Iron Fist gets his powers, you know, from a dragon, right? And... <clears throat> Excuse me. God damn. Sorry. I had something in the back of my throat. What the fuck? Anyway, I apologize. Um, I had basically made the comparison that Iron Fist could... There's an argument that Iron Fist is pretty much a Chinchuriki without calling him a Chinchuriki. 
If you don't know what that is, uh, a jinjiriki from Naruto is like where you have a tailed beast within you. I know some of the, uh, you know, bros that I actually talk to, you know, will already know that. But just for the, you know, little niggas that are like, what did he just say? You know, might as well give them, you know, an explanation. But I was pretty much just, you know, back when all those videos were public, I basically gave Iron Fist like a, a green suit transformation. So base form is, you know, his base form is the white suit. The Hasbro green suit Iron Fist is like, you know, his transformed state. Then the green variant of this would be like full power transformed state. And then the red one would be like, would basically be like when the dragon fully takes over. And you could compare that to when um, Karama fully takes over Naruto's body when he has like red eyes and stuff. So that's where I got the inspiration for this. Um, definite plans for this in the future. Um, sorry to ramble on. I'm just, uh, oh, wait. I'm very, very excited. We got, I'm gonna try to make this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cap this, I'm gonna try to cap this out at 18, 19 minutes. All right. So, last two figures. You have Marvel, which I wanted to get a Carol Danvers, uh, Captain Marvel, but, um, one, all the Captain Marvels that I kept finding. Oh wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. All right, I thought I thought the leg was was about to break. I was about to be like, what? Come on, man. But all the Carol Danver Marvel Legends, like either the Toy Biz one or the Hasbro one, were like forty dollars. So I just basically said fuck it and got this guy for ten bucks. I got this guy from this dude. So if this guy ever sees this, shout out to this guy because I got this guy for like eleven bucks, and you know. It didn't feel loose, you know, it was out of box, but it doesn't feel loose and it doesn't feel like fake or like a bootleg or something like that. So, uh, shout out to Timey Collectibles. Um, and again, if you haven't noticed the theme or trend yet, then I will explain it towards the end. Sorry, I'm just trying to zip lock this dude back up. Okay, last figure. Clone Goku. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, I um, I refer to this guy as the Saiyan who laughs. I can't really explain to you why I like calling him that. Uh, not just yet, because I need to finalize some things. However, um, this is probably easily like my third or fourth favorite figure of the year, and this will probably be my last Monocle Fit figure. I don't think I need to explain to you if you follow me on Instagram and you've seen my comments, you know how I feel about Demonical Fit, and I feel like my criticisms to an extent are valid. I won't go into it here because I'm currently deciding if I even want to do that, but if I do, you will know. However, as much as I like to criticize and hate on Demonical Fit, I will give credit where credit is due. This body... And specifically, hold on, focus. Specifically, this this uh this color of the hair. I I don't know, man. It just it reminds me of like it's kind it's it reminds me more like of like a manga like Goku, like when he turns Super Saiyan. Like I know this sounds weird to say because it's not white, but it's not like yellow or gold. It, it's it's like a mixture of all three, and that's that's really what I like. You know, out of all the Super Saiyan hairs that I've ever seen over the years, you know, like just Super Saiyan, you know, yellow or gold, I, I really think this uh, this head, I don't want to say it's the best in terms of sculpt, but in terms of color, I mean, there's an argument to be made there, man. But this will probably be my last Demonical Fit figure. Um, I hate Demonical Fit so much, and their business practices are shady, and they're uh, they're they're... Just, I don't like it. I don't like how they post renders and then get mad when people are like, hey, what about this render that you showed? And, and, and sometimes they do post renders to get publicity, and I understand that. That's one thing. But to then turn around and post a render for two different products and not release them, and then basically post another render and make the... The main, you know, like, the description basically says something like, 
you know, oh, you know, another render we're not going to post. Dude, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Seriously. That is, that is shitty as fuck. And I understand it. You got to do what you got to do to be able to grow your business. That's capitalism. But I'm not going to support that company anymore. So consider this the last demonical fit. However, Kong Studios, Kong Studios has never once given me a reason to ever, ever doubt their capabilities. Not, and that's not to say that demonical fit's bad. I just have a bias. I'm not going to lie to you. I really do. I do have a bias. But I will give credit where credit's due. This figure is good. And I definitely will use it. But don't expect me to get any more demonical fit stuff unless they do something like way out there, like so far left field that you're just like, whoa, right? Like, I don't know. If they made a golden cell or something like that or a golden cooler, there's a good possibility I may buy it. But I won't buy it directly from them. I'll make sure I buy it from like an American seller or like I'll, I'll give him the money to Star Blast Studios so he can buy it because I'm not... No. No. It's, uh, it, it's whack. But, outside of that, um, I did say I was gonna try to make this 19 minutes. Damn it. Alright, well, I guess we'll push it to 23. If you stayed for this long, I appreciate it. Um, I really do appreciate all the love and support. Um, I know there'll probably be people in the comments being like, Dude, why do you always got a dog on Demonical Fit? You know, I got a dog on Demonical Fit because Demonical Fit does shady things to their consumers and I don't like it. And no one else really feels like they, I haven't really heard anybody else speak out about it, you know, outside of like social media, right? So if nobody else is going to say it, mine as well. That's my opinion on it. Um... I definitely think they have improved in terms of, um, you know, making a figure that doesn't like wobble and stuff. You know, this is a, you know, the Kong Studios Goku Black. I already reviewed this, but the monocle fit is definitely improved. And obviously Kong Studios has, you know, issues there. I mean, I literally just said, you know, making a figure that doesn't wobble and then showed this, right? But, oh, huh, it doesn't wobble. Okay. So Kong Studios definitely does need, need to like tighten up a little bit, but it's not... At least Kong Studios, whenever they show off something, they show a render. And they show a prototype. They don't just show the render and then wait a few months and then show the prototype. They show the prototype as soon as they show the render. That's happened, like, twice. Quote me if I'm wrong, but I remember before this came out, they showed the renders. And then, like, a few days later, like a day later, they showed the first prototype. Same thing with this. So, that's my argument. But, anyway, I did say I would explain this, and I did just say I would push it to 23 minutes. But everything that you just saw for the Marvel and... For the, for the Marvel and DC stuff, exclude Hit, Bardock, and, you know, Evil Goku, and, and this guy. Uh, but everything Marvel, DC, including this Vegeta, you will all see this. All the stuff that you've already seen. In the mini movie, Doomsday vs. Everyone. Because I decided, when I say the title Doomsday vs. Everyone, that immediately makes everybody think, oh wow, there's going to be a bunch of characters. But when I first wrote, wrote it, it really only had a certain number of, of characters from a specific um, verse, right? Like, and that's not to say there's multiple universes. Like, I'm just saying, like, a certain batch of characters from this certain franchise over, you know, other franchises, right? So, <clears throat> I decided to kind of expand that a little bit, you know, and get a little, you know, get a few cosmic and heavy hitters from, you know, both, you know, Marvel and DC. Kind of wanted to expand my, uh, you know what I mean? But, Yeah. Expect to see, uh, expect to see some of these guys, like I said, exclude the Hit and the Bardock and the Evil Goku, uh, but this guy, 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 and this guy, you can expect to see them 
in a couple months uh, when I get around to filming Doomsday vs. Everyone, because once I film this Hit vs. Vegeta stop motion for the Hit review, I'll, uh, I'll hop right into Doomsday vs. Everyone. I'm not going to hold you. Uh, at the same time, I'll probably also be working on um, Perfected Mystic Gohan vs. Ultimate Cell. That's a non-canon fight. Um, right now, I have a minute and 39 seconds. And yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at with this. Um, if anything changes, you know, obviously I'll make an update video and let you guys know. Uh, I appreciate you guys a lot. All of you. Every single one of you. You guys, uh, you guys keep me moving. So yeah, I, uh, hope you guys have a good day. And, uh, this is Soul Train Productions signing out. Hope you have a good one. Peace!